It's going to be breaking down the road to UFC Singapore episode two. <clears throat> so we're going to start off with a, sh- a showcase bout between Jay Hun Park versus Quillen Salkild. Okay, so without getting biased towards this, Quillen Salkild's Australian. He's from Perth. I've watched his career come up. I I've doubted him a few times. I doubted him against uh, Nam Stevens. I doubted him. I, I, I've really doubted him against Blake Donnelly. And this guy just keeps proving me wrong out there. And yeah, I, I, after the way he beat Blake Donnelly, I can't pick against him. Blake Donnelly was 7-1 and one at the time. Really good amateur boxer too. Actually fought Conor Ben in the amateur scene. Uh, Conor Ben, you know, doing big things. I think he just failed a drug test, but, you know, he he was doing big things before that. So, yeah, and Quillen Salkill just went in there and starched him in 32 seconds. I was so impressed with that performance. I'm also impressed a lot with Quillen's cardio. He weaponizes his cardio. He's got good grappling. He's fought a bunch of Muay Thai fights. He's well-rounded. He's got good kickboxing. Jae Hun Park looks good from what I've seen. He's got a nice jab, but... He seems to be really easily pressured against the fence. His takedown defense didn't look too good, and he really got wilted and broken in one of his fights. Obviously, it was his debut, and Quillen also lost his debut, but I take the way Quillen lost his debut uh, to be a bit better. He got subbed by playing into a really high-level Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. He made a big mistake in that fight, but Hun Park literally lost due to, you know, getting damaged up, getting beaten up, being pressured and destroyed against the fence. So I rate the way Quillen lost a lot more. Obviously, that fight doesn't really mean too much because they both went on runs afterwards. But overall, they're both young guys and they'll both probably eventually make the UFC. But I I think Quillen's got the higher potential and I think even at this point, Quillen's better than Jay Hong Park. And I'm going to take Quillen Sauerkill to... Take this one by TKO. T- Jesus, I said that weird. I'm taking Quillen Salkild here by TKO due to ground and pound. I think he'll he'll get it. He'll sprawl from a takedown. I think Park will sprawl, uh, shoot on him. And this guy's got really good sprawls. I think he's going to sprawl. He's going to get top. He's going to get on top, and he's going to beat him up. Probably gassing out Park as well because Quillen really weaponizes his cardio. I'm being really impressed with him. The Domar far. Uh, Dom Ma Fan win is really impressive too. The street putter. This guy's really good as well. Good jujitsu. Actually subbed Justin Van Heerden in a jujitsu comp. And Quillen Sauke would actually went in there and subbed him. Use weaponizing his cardio. Showing amazing sprawls. Like, yeah, I really like Quillen Sauke in here. This this fight is the fight I'm most excited for. So this is why I've done I've gone in depth talking about this fight so much. I'm just so excited to see Quillen Sauke in there. You know, he trains with Cody Haddon as well. Really good prospect. Obviously a bantamweight, so a bit smaller than Quillen Sauerkill, but still a really good training partner to have. They both strengthen each other's games. And yeah, they're just... I think I think Quillen Sauerkill gets this one done. I don't think he's going to get a UFC contract. He wants to defend his eternal belt still, so I like that. I like him getting a bit more ex- experience first. I think this guy has high potential. He's only 23 years old, I think. So, you know, still young, really good guy. Like I say, fought in, had, has Muay Thai fights, really good grappling, won most of his fights with submissions. Has a win over Abdallah uh, Bieda, who is a really highly touted prospect, who's, I think, 8-1 now as a pro. And Quillen Sauke literally went out there and Habib, this guy, like just smashed him on the ground and subbed him in the first round, like literally just fucking apparently looked like Habib out there. Like, he literally just fucking smashed him on the ground. So I really like Quillen Sauke to get this one done. Uh, eight, eight and is at amateur too, so yeah. I know I'm going on a lot about Quillen Sauke here, so maybe it's going to come off like I'm a little biased, but I'm just high on him, especially after his Blake Donnelly performance. He just gets so much better every fight. But yeah, I like him to get a finish here against uh, Jay Hun Park. So yeah, I'm going with the... I'm going with the Aussie, unsurprisingly. And then moving on, we have Long X, Long Z versus Shuna Kamabuka. I'm going to go with 
This is a tough fight. They both came, they're both coming off split decisions. I'm going to go with the Japanese fighter here. I'm going to go with Shuna Kameyakuba. I think he can get this fight to the ground, and I think he can get a submission here. Uh, not super confident on this fight, but that's my prediction. Then moving on, we have Zhong Rong versus Zhang Ak Kim. I'm going to go with Zhu Rong here. Was in the UFC, has wins against UFC competition. You know, he's fought the way better level of competition. He looked good on his road to UFC fight as well, you know. And like I say, he's used to the big lights. He's used to all these big fights and everything. Still super young as well. Uh, I'm not sure how old Kim is. Let me give that. Let me double check that. Uh, but I know Zhu Rong's still really young, so he'll probably eventually get back to the UFC. Oh, okay. So they don't have Kim's age. But yeah, he's just big, really bad level of competition. Actually has a split decision loss to Jay Hun Park. But a lot of people thought that Zhang Ak Kim won that fight. And I did actually watch that fight. So I actually have seen a bit of this, guys. He's got... Yeah, he showed a lot of good grappling in that fight, from what I remember. But I'm still going to go with Zhu Rung here. I just think Zhu Rung's got the better level of competition, the better experience. So yeah, I'm going to go with Zhu Rung getting this one done, and probably probably by TKO. He's got a lot of amateur losses as well, but you know, they're the amateur losses, but wow, he was like 3-5 and five as an amateur, 3-6, and six, no, 4-5 and five as an amateur, that's crazy. But yeah, I'm going to go with the Chinese fighter here. And then we have... Dara Messi, Zawella Pasi versus Chang Hu Li. Uh, gonna go with gonna go with the Chinese fighter here. Uh, I'm not gonna repeat his name, but you, <laughs> Dama Messi. I think he'll get this one done. Probably. Ah, oh, this is interesting. Oh, uh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Lee here. Actually, I'm gonna go with Ho Lee. He, I'm remembering his performance now. He had a really impressive performance. The guy he beat wasn't the best, but he he really he looked like a Korean Habib out there. Obviously, the Indian guy he fought probably wasn't hadn't faced the best level of competition, but I was really impressed with him actually yeah, out there how he won. So I'm actually gonna go with the Korean fighter here. He says he wants to go out there and replicate Habib's style, and he really did go out there and impress last fight. So yeah, I'm going to go with the Korean, actually, in this fight, just because I, I remember his fight. So yeah, I'm going to go with Chung Hu Lee here. I, I did watch this the other day as well. I did do a bit of tape. And then moving on, we have the main event. Baba Loti versus Shin Haraguchi. Now this one's interesting. Baba... Told Lati shouldn't even be in here. He literally he got saved by a back of the head shot. Pretty much he got saved by a DQ. He was on his way to being finished. Obviously that's not going to matter too much here against Haraguchi because Haraguchi's a big, not big. He's actually really undersized for a lightweight, but he is a grappler. So obviously he's going to come in with a wrestle heavy uh, game plan. I don't like him at this division. He does look really undersized. Like, he should go to featherweight if he ends up winning the tournament and everything. But I'm going to go with Haraguchi here. I think he can implement his game plan here. But, yeah, the size the size adds some benefits and some disadvantages. I think, you know, him being so small, so much smaller, he might he'd probably have a really big cardio edge here. But yeah, I, I like Karaguchi to get this done. I was impressed with what I've seen with him, and he's got really good grappling. But yeah, he needs to go to featherweight, because yeah, lightweight definitely isn't the division for him. But yeah, they're, they're my predictions for the Road to U UFC episode... Uh, Road to UFC Singapore episode 2. God, I was uh, going all over the place there. But yeah, they're my predictions. Hopefully these predictions are correct, because it's always good to have correct pr predictions. But yeah... Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, put on the notifications, and I will catch you all next time.
Thank you.